Um, <laughs> <laughs> Who am I? Um, my name is Obsolus Sens. I'm a techno DJ, but even more, I'm a tinkerer. I love to explore things, I love to code, I love to hack on electronics. Um, do stuff with that. And, but I also want to make music with it. I also want to play at clubs, I also want to play at festivals. And yeah, combining those two things, tinkering and um, exploring, learning all at the same time. Sometimes also means that I feel like I don't know shit actually. <laughs> and um, yeah, this explains a lot of moments in this project. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, you can find me on various platforms. What is Equi? Uh, as I already said, I'm a DJ. I want to DJ with my laptop. I want to DJ with my own stuff. So Equi is a DJ and performance mixer. That means this device that is mixing my signals, that is equalizing my signals, that is filtering my signals, with which I can control the sense of my effects and all that stuff. It's of course FOSS software, otherwise I wouldn't be here. <laughs> <laughs> and it's of course also made for Linux, Jack and MIDI, I think otherwise I also wouldn't be here. To give you a little um, preview of what is a DJ mixer, maybe not everybody has seen one. What I'm talking about is, oh, that's quite big, but that's good. It's something like this. So normally it's hardware, it's big hardware devices where at the top you can uh, input your signals, your sources with Chinch or XLR or something. And you have an equalizer, your faders, your filters, you have a lot of fun things to be creative with your music, to change them, to combine them and so on. Um, this is one inspiring thing for me, like this device, it's the Xone 96 by Ellen and Heath. And another one that is even more important than this mixer is the Model 1. It's quite a niche mixer, it's also made for clubs, it's made for techno, um, for hybrid sets, so if you combine a drum computer and DJing or synthesizers and all perform this live in a club or in a, like, yeah, something like that. Why do I want to build this thing? I just showed you two very beautiful devices. The first point is, of course, they are very expensive. The cheaper one, the first one is around 2,000 euro by now. The other one is 3,000 plus euros. So very expensive and um, still they are lacking. So the fader curves are weird, the pre-listening is weird. Yeah just not how I want it to be. And also Jack and Linux is just really powerful. Jack, we have really good routing, very modular routing, similar as with hardware. And that just makes it a no-brainer to build it on Jack and Linux. Digital sound processing is also really powerful and really cool. Both of those devices are analog, that's costly, that's kind of limited in some senses too. So exploring the digital space on this is quite fun and yeah so yeah exploring learning and of course if i build my own thing it has my own sound it has my own character already built in that makes it fun and interesting too to perform live it gives it already a character that is kind of mine yeah <laughs> uh, why dj and performance mixer i already mentioned a couple of things Maybe you think about DJing arts ah, just like playing one track after the other. It can get a little bit more involved and I will show it to you with, uh, with two pictures of two inspiring artists for me. And the first one is Richie Horton who was um, involved in developing both of those mixtures. So he's quite interested in also pushing forward the technology or bringing in new ideas. And uh, you can see a table full of gear, you see a drum computers, you see MIDI controllers, you see a laptop that is running the DJ software, in this case Tractor, maybe you heard about it. Um, and you see the Xone 92, it's an older version of what I showed you. And you can even see an Ableton push, so he's combining a lot of different things together to create his sound, to create his music, 
It's his own instruments, his own drums, his own samples, but also existing tracks, existing mixed full tracks of other people. And blending this all in to create a journey to create like a Sonics experience in the club. Uh, this is Chris Liebing, he's doing similar stuff. Here this is a better picture, I think. Again, a drum machine or a groove box in this case. MIDI controllers, a laptop with tractor and a mixer in the middle. So the mixer is kind of the heart of that thing. So it combines all the signals. But it's also more than that. It's not just a tool. It's giving the character also to the sound. It gives me the possibilities that I have, how I can shape the sound, how I can blend the sound. And for this, we have equalizers. Um, equalizers are very diff different. They can sound very different. They can sound better or less good. Uh, same for filters and can give us a lot of options. And because in the end we want to blend all those different sources together and create something that is sounding good, that's sounding co coherent, and for this we need those kind of tools. And this is that involved that people say, it's not just a tool, it's already an instrument. This is for now my setup, this is a picture, you can also see it here on the desk. It's two little wooden boxes and a laptop. Uh, those wooden boxes are built by me, they are MIDI controllers, they do nothing crazy, MIDI controllers, but they are shaped to fit what I need uh, with my program so that they have all the controls that I need. And yeah, I think time for a little performance. We have some. Yep, that sounds good. What I did do now is basically I'm having three tracks running. I can show them to you. I'll put a loop on this one again. So this is basically a kick, a little bit of a groove, hi-hats, a little bit of atmosphere in the background. That's one thing. This is the other thing. It's a little bit more groove, has this synth in the lows that is giving us a little bit more of a groove. And I'm basically combining them give a little bit more of the thing. What I also did on uh, this second channel is I cut out the lows. I have a filter so that the lows lows, so the kick is gone. I don't want to have that. I want to have that of the first one. And then on the third track, I have a little bit more of percussions going on. Also as a loop. Ah, actually, no, not anymore. But that's fine. And that's the whole blend of all those things together. And this is just a simple example 
for the beginning, just to give you an idea of uh, what I'm doing and what is the idea of this DJ mixer that I'm building. And I will explain all the features and things more in detail later. So, let's continue. What is the concept of Equi? First, Mixer is a software exploring the space, not hardware, just software. What can we do? Of course, techno electronic music focused, that's a lot easier to mix, and it's just what I do. Probably you can use it for hip hop or other stuff too. Uh, the layering DJing style, layering means I want to have multiple tracks, I want to take them apart, I want to combine them, I don't want to be limited to play one track after the other, that's totally fine and cool too, but what I want to do is I want to take tracks apart, take them more as a tool, take out the things I like, put out other things on top and create a new sound that fits for me in that situation that I can improvise on and that I feel in that moment. And of course also for hybrid setups, so imagine another drum computer here on the right so that I can play uh, more drums or something on top. The equalizer, I will explain it more in detail later on. What I mean with model one like EQ, it's a specific idea of an equalizer, um, but this is one of the main concepts to explore this specific kind of an equalizer. And of course club ready, I want to be able to play in the club I don't want to have a panic in the disc panic in the discotheque, so uh, yeah, just have it shaped enough and robust enough to play in the club, and also that the sound is good enough to play in the club. I don't want to lag behind other people because they use off-the-shelf hardware and sound a lot better and richer than me. And it's Linux; it's fun to hack on things. <laughs> Hackability, of course. Um, this is a picture of the program. It's not the main thing you want to um, get your hands on all the time. Of course, it's running in the background. You want to use the controller, the, hard, the hardware with it. Um, still, to give you an idea how it looks, you have a lot of faders, a lot of buttons where you can do things. So all the features that I now did here on uh, this hardware are, of course, also exposed in the user interface. So if you just want to play around with it, want to hear how it sounds, you can just run it without anything extra. Um, let's see if I can make this a little bit smaller. Yeah, so that you see more. Um, I guess most of you know Jack. Just to give you an idea of how you can root things, you have inputs, you have outputs, you have sends. Q for the headphones, main output for the um, audio interface. It's on this picture not connected, but I guess you can uh, imagine that. And also MIDI inputs and outputs all through Jack also, that makes it a lot easier for session management and stuff like that. And Jack gives, gives it to us for free. Now talking a little bit more about the features. Um, we have eight inputs, stereo inputs. Um, so we can put in whatever we want, stereo sound. Two of, we have two sends. So we can, um, every channel we can send to an effect on two different effects. And um, I will explain that later on. We have two subfilters. Uh, I will also explain that later, just to mention it now. Two headphone outputs, so you can play with your friends. One main output, of course, and the EQ I was already mentioning. Um, now I want to explain to you a little bit more what this model one like EQ is that I'm always talking about. And for this, I'll play another track so that you can actually hear it. This is the track without equalization. So I didn't change anything about it. I'll put the loop. And I have a high pass filter. It sounds like this. So I can take out the lows, mids and highs from that on. I guess most of you will know this concept. And it's tried to, well, I designed it in a way that it tries to keep the frequencies as full as possible, being as sharp as possible with the cutting, without being resonant, without sounding off. So kind of preserving the original sound as much as possible, as much as is possible of cutting away things of that, if that makes sense. 
So we have the high pass filter. We have it also in the other direction, so low pass filter. So we can take out the highs to kind of reduce it to the lows. So we now only have to kick this little rumble thingy there. We of course can do both things at the same time. To kind of only have this rumble groove there. And we have a bell EQ, an asymmetric bell EQ. Um, we have one knob with which we can um, specify the center frequency and another knob with which we can say pull or push, boost those frequencies around the center frequency or take them out, cut them. So if I, for example, now want to have this rumble a little bit louder, I can kind of find the frequency range and boost that or cut that. And I can do the same with the lows or the highs. And with this, all those tools, I can get into the sound a bit more, change things how I want to do them, attenuate things, take them out that I don't like them, and really mix and blend things. And yeah, that's the equalizer. Mm. Yeah, as I mentioned it before already, it's really the core and gives the character of a mixer. It gives me the, the tools and possibilities that I have with this mixer. And it's a little bit different to most other DJ mixers that are out there. Normally you have a limited amount of bands, normally three or four bands. So you have one band, the lows, low mids, mid highs and the highs. And for this band you can also only make them louder or less loud. But if you have something that is in between those bands, you don't have ways to make them louder or less loud. And uh, with this belly cue, with this um, with the center frequency, I can find those frequencies and cut or boost them. Yeah, I think that's all. Yeah. Another really important tool for DJing is the so-called cue system. It's what DJs and live performers use to be able to listen to channels before one mixes them in. And this is a thing that annoyed me with a lot of other mixes because they normally have a, so you can toggle, you can press buttons here and then the LEDs shine up for this channel. And that means I can hear them on my headphones. Um, but I also want to be able to mix them with the main sound. And very often the curve that they have to blend those is, um, you can say, I only want to hear the cute channels or I only want to hear the main channels. And if I mix both of them, it lowers the volume of both to 50%, which to me is really weird. A lot of people love it. I don't like it. So with this, it's a little bit different. If I have both signals, both are at 100%. If I only have the main output because I don't have monitor boxes or in my booth, then I hear that at 100%. And only if I go over 50% to the other side, the signal of that goes away is getting lowered. So pre-listening, balancing. Another really useful feature that you don't find on, for example, a lot of software controllers is that you can uh, select between pre and post EQ. So I worked on the equalizer and filter on uh, one channel and then I'm thinking about, okay, maybe I want to introduce the lows and the kick of that channel. I want to switch it. Um, how did it actually sound? <laughs> of course I can do it live and everybody can listen to it, but sometimes you want to make sure again and only listen it on the headphones. So I have a knob with which I can say, only give me the signal post -EQ, uh, before the equalizer, pre-EQ. Also because we're mixing signals at 100% in the middle, I added a limiter, That's something that I had to learn in clubs, playing very loud on the headphones, not good for your ears, protect your ears, people. <laughs> so yeah, it has a limiter that works quite well, it distorts the signal if it's too loud, but isn't um, playing the signals too, too loud. Also, this whole cue system exists twice, so if you're playing uh, with your friends, we DJs call it back-to-back, -back, um, both of them can have headphones, both of them can have their own independent cue system, which makes it a lot more fun if you're playing long sessions. 
The next feature is the send and return. I guess a lot of people also know it. Some maybe also no, don't know it, especially with um, software controllers and Tractor. You often don't have this kind of feature. Um, it's for effects, mainly for effects. Um, and the idea is that on every channel, um, let's see if I can bring up the GUI. On every channel, if I play something on the channel. So we are here on channel three. We are on channel three. And I have those two sends, so if I put this up, I can send something. Or this one, I can. Oh, that's the wrong channel, that's was channel 4. I can send something, and this is going through an effect, and the wet signal of the effect is going back into my mixer. It appears on uh, channel FX2 or channel FX1, which is like the seventh and the eighth channel on this mixer. And this way I can mix in effects. So this is a reverb, this is a delay, and because it's normal channels, I of course can also work the equalizer if I want to do that. So, so I can now low pass that, or the, change the volume. Actually I can also send it again into the reverb, maybe not that nice sounding, <laughs> but you get the idea. And um, yeah. I will also show you real quick the, if I find my mouse again. This is the jet graph. So this is the reverb node, for example. You can see it's connected to send. It goes back into FX1. And um, my reverb is just Dragonfly. Maybe you know it, a little bit of settings. Quite a nice reverb. For the delay, I use Cardinal, which is a synthesizer, like a modular synthesizer, crazy device. Uh, totally can recommend those plugins to make effects. Um, I think I talked about all those things. Oh, maybe you should put them away again. So, ciao, cacao. Yes. Subfilters, that's something that I think you don't find on any other software mixer that I know of. And it's an idea but from the Xon mixer that I showed you in the beginning. And it's, it's an interesting tool if you want to filter, send multiple channels through the same filter. For example, you want to create a drop, you want to take out the lows, um, or you want to create energy by creating this difference in energy, taking out the lows to drop them back in. And of course, I have a filter on all my channels. I could just work all the high passes at the same time. But with three or four channels, it can be quite annoying, especially getting back to the position where I was before. I worked them so the frequencies fit together. And the subfilters are a way um, that I can route every channel through these subfilters, then work the subfilter, can deactivate it again, everything as before. And I will show you really quickly how they sound. Um, I will put up the same loop. I hope you're not too sick of it yet. Oh no, actually let's use another one. So we again on channel three. Here we have the subfilter. You can of course map it to MIDI and everything. Uh, but I will show it for you now in the user interface. So we select, send it or route it through subfilter one. It's here. We can activate it. And we have those three settings up here. High pass, band pass, low pass. I will explain it in a second. The frequency, knob and the resonance. And for now we will turn on the high pass. We will also put this in a loop here. Um, let's put the frequency a little. Oh no, let's activate it. High pass filter. 
nothing crazy. Let's put on the resonance. So you can create a filter that with quite a little bit of different character with the high pass, but we can also add, for example, the band pass on top, which creates a different character again. We can even turn on all of them at the same time, which is then again just attenuating a couple of frequencies. Or we can only use the band pass, to, which drops it to the band around the center frequency. And if we work the resonance a bit up, it makes it a little bit more spiky, a little bit different. And this way we can create nice little drops. Normally in techno electronic music you have this four beat or one bar, little drops in between. Uh, for mixing it's very important to have those drops too because in that time you can bring in new elements, you can create tension with those things. And uh, it's also cool to just be with your music, be in the groove. If you're mixing all the time and you're syncing in your library, it's nice to get back on your music and actually interact with it again. And of course you can put it on multiple channels at the same time. So if on all three channels something would be running, they would be all getting put through this and back to that. So also your drum computer or whatever would be affected by that. Two systems, so you can also say here, route it through subfilter two. For example, you want to go the other way around. You maybe want to low pass a couple of signals. Oh, wait, we have to go here. Shoop. Yeah. Um. What else do we have? Mm. Let's talk about what can we use with Equi. And I will just mention some uh, interesting software projects that can be fun to, to use together with Equi. First, to, and worth to mention, is uh, Mix. It's the open source DJing program. It's the Inkscape of the DJing programs. It's quite a cool piece of software. It, it works with a lot of MIDI controllers. It works really well. And uh, it has a jack backend, so you can say every channel that I'm playing, every deck, as you call it, every track, uh, should be routed, for example, through another jack application. So in that, in that case, through Equi. And then you can have a, uh, one controller that controls um, mix and another controller that ex, um, controls Equi. In theory, you can also use the same one and route it through both applications. Check out Mix, it's amazing. Xbox is another open source DJ software. It's more made for vinyl, so especially timecode, um, which is a system where you put a special vinyl on a record player, or on a vinyl player, you connect it through your audio interface and it has a time signal. So you can um, have a digital vinyl, you can play digital tracks, but you can control it with vinyl, really cool too. That's also all jack. Normally you need an external mixer, with Equi, you could now have a software digital mixer where you only need uh, MIDI controllers. Libre CDJ, it's the software that I'm running on. I wrote it, it's still hacky-ish. It works for exactly what I need, but uh, it can only play MP3s for now, for example, so <laughs> not done yet, but still I wanted to mention it. And of course, Jack, we can route everything external through it too, if we have a good enough audio interface. So external ZDJs, just normal vinyls, synthesizers, drum computers that are analog, all works, everything jack. The recommendations I mentioned already before, I think. Jalf Carla for plug-in host, check them out. Compatible controllers, so the MIDI controllers that we have. It's a little bit of a mixed bag. There's good and bad news because the bad news is definitely, for now, it's only mine. I built them for that and I only wrote MIDI mappings for that. But I mentioned before, it's hackable. You can write your own MIDI mappings. You have a MIDI controller and you think it's worth adding a mapping for it. Go for it. It's relatively easy to write MIDI mappings. You don't need to know a lot of coding. And I can totally assist and support you. It's, it's not too, too crazy. 
So yeah, the hackability for this, I think, is very important for MIDI mappings. And also, I'm really interested in finding off-the-shelf MIDI controllers that can be interesting to, to use with Equi, just so that we can have those MIDI mapping, mix, mappings in. And uh, we can tell people, yeah, you want to use it, check out those MIDI controllers. They are interesting to use. At the same time, I built those MIDI controllers myself. I'm interested in electronics. I want to do PCP design. If you want to build MIDI controllers, open hardware, and you think that's cool, designing PCBs, hit me up. I'm all in. <laughs> and yeah, I think we're also getting to an end. Right now, I feel Equi is a little bit at the 0 0.5. It's already very usable. I used it at festivals. I used it in clubs. Uh, no panic in the discotheque for now. Um, but still, for the 1.0, I still want to do little things. I want to finalize the equalizer. Maybe I want to change and tweak some, some things here and there, how wide the bell is and stuff like that. How sharp the filters are. Also with the subfilter, same thing. Because my idea is, if I'm releasing 1.0, I want this to be stable with the sound character. So as long as you're using a 1.0, it should sound the same. I don't want to change with 1.1 the filters. I will do a version 2 of that or another project. Then I'm also thinking of adding an overdrive. Actually, I was hacking on this with uh, Jan tonight on it. Uh, and it's an idea of having a distortion with a headroom that you can, uh, can, can change. Because as DJs, we like to run things into the reds and get this nice distortion, which is fine with analog hardware. Um, they are built in a way that we get nice distortion out of them. Especially if the gain at the main output is, is lowered, we can do that. Um, with digital, we get nasty clipping, nasty digital clipping. And I want to explore if we can find a little overdrive algorithm that helps us with that. Selectable fader curves is something some people really like to have fader curves that um, give you a lot of energy in the last third. I like them to be like. Um, spread equally over the whole fader. I want to use my whole fader, but people that are cutting a lot, um, so you want maybe from, from hip hop scratching or stuff like that, you know it. They're cutting in the, the, the like the hi-hats or parts of the sound. They really want to have a um, like very small part of the fader that does a lot. Main equalizer so that you can also equalize the main output and the booth output would be quite cool too. That's all things that I'm thinking about doing for the 1.0. But it's already very usable by now. Just maybe things can change. Yeah. I'm done. I want to thank a couple of people because this is a project I'm working on since two years. Uh, I was talking to a lot of my friends about that that don't really, are not that interested in it. Uh, some yes, some no. <laughs> Still, they all had to listen to my thoughts. <laughs> and uh, depressing moments in this project. So big thanks to all those people here, Anna Muni, Tommy, and the Photonies, which is a small collective that I'm part of that do parties and light. Really cool people. I love you. Thank you. Faust, it's a programming language for DSP stuff. Amazing. If you want to do uh, DSP programming, check it out. Also big thank to, thanks to Sleds. Um, he's one of the main developers in it. He helped me out of the shit quite a couple of times where I didn't know what to do. Uh, and the whole uh, community is amazing. Mix and Moray. Moray is a new DJing project, uh, DJ software and, and Rust. I already saw a cool Rust t-shirt here. Shout out to Rust. <laughs> um, I learned a lot from them and from their code, how to write real-time code. So big thanks to them. And, of course, also Richie Horton, who was the guy in the beginning who inspired me in this DJing style. Andy Rigby Jones is um, an engineer at Allen and & Heath, and now I play differently. He uh, worked on a lot of those analog mixers, and a lot of ideas are inspired by those two people. Yeah, that's it. Thank you.
more music. Sure. I mean, we can also do questions. Yeah, of course. Uh, like, this is the interface for the equalizer. That's what I can show you. The other thing, both at the same time, will not work. So I also have a DJ interface. It's this project I worked. Um, I can also show it to you once so that you have an idea. But I think both will be a little bit much. So this is the Libre CDJ project. I have here my library. I have four tracks. I have these beautiful waveforms <laughs> in RGB that give me an idea of what's happening. And uh, yeah, I can set loops, for example. Now I have a one beat loop here on, on channel three. You can see it. It gives me the BPM. It gives me the keys. And um, yeah. And here it's completely controllable with the keyboard. So I don't need a MIDI controller for that. If I now want to, let's release that one. Let's mix in something. Oh, shit. <laughs> A little bit more techno. Create our own drop. Bring in the other thing. Maybe. I really like to play this hypnotic kind of sound mixed with a little bit of groove. I think it's quite cool. You can make it a little bit louder. Let's see what else we have. We have a little bit of an atmosphere. Let's see if we can mix it live. So this little bit thing in the background here. Also quite bubbly, a synthesizer is now appearing.
we're back in only one track, uh, only the flute ratio track now. Um, but yeah, this is how we do it, <laughs> or how you can do it. Questions. Yes, questions. Uh, if you ask a question, I can give you the microphone so we have it on the recording as well. So yes, please. you can ask them yourself? Yeah. Okay. So, um, I have a couple of questions. <laughs> Oops, I need to check the feedback. So, um, like, how many iterations uh, did the. Oops, uh, am I still on there? Okay. How many iterations did the controllers have to forego before you were? Some happy-ish uh, with how they how they perform and where all the encoders are, and um, especially how hackable is such a box now that it's uh, in its more or less complete state? Um, like, um, could could you sort of easily replace them? I mean, or is is this a rough sketch still? So where is it in this? Um. I think they are quite easily replaceable because they built two boxes. One is for the equalizer, one is for the mixer. So mm. I can uh, switch out one of the things. I don't need to iterate on the whole thing. I only need to reiterate on one part. That was definitely the thing how I cracked the problem, kind of. Because in the beginning I was trying to build uh, a laser cut box which fitted everything. Didn't work out for me. Wood is not stable enough for such a big thing. And um, yeah, this way I could iterate on the encasing or the cases. The potentiometers I took from an old analog mixer. So I got quite decent components on that for basically free. In case you're tinkering around with those stuff, I can only recommend it. Get an old defect analog mixer, use the faders and stuff. And besides that, I mean, yeah, it's figuring out the electronics, figuring out all your shorts, but it's fun. It's just an Arduino Uno. It's a little bit of C++. Hate it, but once it's running, it's running. <laughs> <laughs> uh, did it ask, uh, answer your question? Cool. Now, was, um, I was especially asking, like, how how fun is it, or is it more more of an ordeal to like get like connect it all together and just having to re resolve it and so on and so forth. It's both, I would say. I mean, of course, it's annoying uh, in the beginning, but I develop kind of a system at some point. Um, I do a little, lot of like flying wires inside of it. So the potentiometers are hold in the front plate, but on the back, I'm just running a wire through it for the ground for the uh, five volts. And uh, yeah, you need to work clean on it. So the first iterations, of course, right. yeah, are not clean. And then you get more problems. And then you learn to use a multimeter. And yeah. yeah. Just one more question before I'll pass the microphone. Um, like, what would you consider necessary to reach more DJs to switch over to Linux? And um, especially considering that like, there's a um, very big uh, ecosystem with Pioneer Record Box and Serato DJ and like... I think bring your own device is really important for that. A lot of clubs have this policy, play on Pioneer, play on our mixer. If you're big you can decide what mixer you want to play on and what generation of Pioneer CDJs you want to play on. Maybe you can bring an effect box but that's it and only if you're big and otherwise people will hate you there <laughs> if you come up with your laptop. And uh, to some degree, it makes sense. I think we all had this moment on a party where suddenly you have this window, bling, update, ready, sound in the middle of a set or something like that. Windows needs to restart now. But uh, I think Linux can give you a really robust setup, Mac too. And uh, yeah, clubs need to iterate on the bring your own device policy. Yeah. All right. Cool, thanks.
so uh, I understand there's XQ is mostly doing the mixing and the yep. queuing, right? So transport, uh, audio sources, and this is all external. Also the routing exactly. is check, right? So yep. using additional tools to hook that up and everything. Exactly. So what is that what you're showing on the screen right now? This is Libre CDJ, one of the tools I mentioned. I wrote that. It only does MP3 for now. You can clone it on my code berg. Uh, but you run it with, it has no MIDI support. Everything is with keys and your mm. keyboard. So your keyboard is basically your MIDI controller. One problem right now is that it's fixed to my keyboard layout. <laughs> <laughs> but if you have the same one, it can be fun. <laughs> Also, do you keep the routing saved somehow, or do you always make it up again with different audio interfaces and stuff like that? I did that until I learned about uh, auto connectors and session management. Um, right now, I'm using QPV Graph for the auto connection. I just run it in a Tmux session, all my tools. Uh, so Tmux session that is getting uh, started. QPV Graph is doing the routing and reconnects everything. Thank you. Maybe a bit of a, a conceptual question comparing it to uh, tools like Mix, which are more like these all-inclusive mm -hmm. uh, mixing software. Um, if I remember correctly, Mix has also the concept of decks, mm -hmm. but each deck has like only one track, right? Or like that was mm -hmm. how, how, what I learned when uh, yeah. getting into uh, DJ mixing with Mix um, and your software is taking like a totally different approach of um, you have channels and then these channels mix into a deck and then the deck is sort of mm, deck is mainly normally it's the, like I think DJ ling DJing language it's one track running on one slot channel normally also like a deck would be imagine a vinyl player that would be one deck and um, of course in digital world those concepts get mixed up a bit but my equi project doesn't care, it also doesn't care if you play vinyl or whatever, so it has just channels. But yet these uh, QA and QB, isn't that sort of just um, the things, like the two tracks sort of you mm, fade between? No. or No. QA and QB is, like the Q system is that system which is doing the headphone pre-listening for the different channels. So that's one of the confusing languages in uh, DJing Q is also used for points to jump to on tracks. Don't ask me why it's called hot cues there. I don't know. Queuing a track is also if you like um, queue it up, so if you play it on beat. Don't know why they use the same fucking word for <laughs> those things. Um, but yeah, that's for the queue system here is for headphones, pre-listening. I see. Um, how processor intensive is it? I can uh, show it to you. Yeah, can't really see the, the figures from here. So it quiz right now at 4% CPU, it uses 61 MB RAM. Right, now what I'm, what I'm thinking of is you're running it on a laptop. Could you run it on an, on an SBC, like a Raspberry Pi or something like that? I think especially the new ones for sure, yeah. It should also compile on ARM. The SIMD stuff and flushing should also work on ARM. Any more questions? Yes. Um, did I understand that correctly, that the subfilters are somehow like insert effects for multiple channels? Are these uh, separate instances for every channel, or is it just one instance for all the channels? It's uh, one instance for all the channels, and okay. then the channels are getting routed through that. Mm -hmm. So they can take three different ways, either through subfilter A, subfilter B, or no filter. And then it's getting internally routed through them. Okay. And of course, all the but channels it's, that but, go... But it's an insert in, in the sense that it's... The channels run fruits and you get the whole wet signal after. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Hey. 
I, I have like two questions. One is, have you heard about Dragonfly Reverb having issues with volume spikes? Mm, I did not have problems with it. Some people I know lost some hearing to it. Oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe have a like a really tight limiter after it, um, just in case, because I I believe the bug was uh, figured out some time ago, but unfortunately some distros ship an old version, which mm -hmm. can explode. Oh. Uh, so Limiter, yeah. I advise caution. It's seriously dangerous. <laughs> and the second thing, uh, I wonder, have you heard about um, Bespoke Synth? Yes. Uh, what do you think about it and how it compares to your, um, to your uh, Bespoke solution? <laughs> I think I, I played a lot with Bespoke actually. I think it was one of the more modular synthesizers thingies, half doors that I really liked and thought were well, quite fun to use. Um, yeah, I mean, it's ev like it brings its own jack graph and it's kind of annoying to expose it on jack. That's the thing that I dislike about Bespoke. But besides that, it's fun. And I think you could route it through this mixer too. Um, yeah. Yeah, so the, like, the main deficiency is like you can't route anything for Jack into Bespoke. I think you can. I think it has like some, uh, I think it's limited on the audio backend somehow, but it, um, I think you may need to make a virtual audio interface and then use that in Bespoke and then you can feed into that stuff on Jack and then it works. Yeah, that makes sense. Thanks. If there are no more questions, then uh, thank you again and great talk.